Okay, let's uh, introduce our next guest. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, let's expand on some of those statements with our next guest, uh, Adnan Rashid, who's a historian and political commentator. And it's very appropriate, Adnan Rashid, first of all, thanks for talking to us, that you have this background of being, uh, historically speaking, and also politically. Put that together for us. There is a history, isn't there, especially recently, regarding uh, some anti-Islamic uh, 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 acts that have occurred, of which this is probably one of the worst that we have witnessed in quite some time. Uh, what are the motives behind this? We know the individual who made this, could it be purely for what he has stated, which goes on uh, uh, to expand on what uh, Saab Shafter, guest there, said, that uh, this movie maker, Sam Basile, we don't know if that's his real name, said he believed this movie would help his native land, Israel, by exposing Islam's flaws to the world. I mean, is that purely a personal reason he made this movie, or is there another agenda behind this, given all these spates of anti-Islam uh, uh, instances uh, that have happened? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much for having me today at Press TV. This goes back in time. Anti-Islamic uh, rhetoric and propaganda is not something new. It began in the Middle Ages where a lot of the monks and clergy were writing against the Prophet. Unfounded claims were made. And still, uh, to say the same is taking place today. There, there was a group of people recently, not very long ago, who proposed uh, a theory uh, called... Uh, the clash of the civilization theory uh, and the author of this theory was initially Bernard Lewis uh, who of course uh, has strong ties to the state of Israel and then it was picked up by a man called Samuel uh, Huntington and this theory basically stated or um, implied that there is a perpetual clash of civilizations between the West and the East and this civil, uh, this clash is inevitable this clash it will continue now obviously this theory was contested by many honest and objective historians and uh, social scientists they uh, rebutted the theory successfully they made uh, the masses realize that this theory has no substance whatsoever to it now these people who propose this theory or the people who are behind this theory uh, if they don't have their way by writing books, they will produce films and realize the theory in reality. So what, this, this appears to be an attempt to bring that theory to life. Basically, this, these people are simply warmongers. They are no friends of humanity. Their reasons that this was uh, made out of um, um, their respect for freedom of speech or they want to um, improve and promote freedom of speech by making films like this, this doesn't help them in any way because when you look at the film, you realize that there is nothing to do with freedom of speech in this film. There is no, in fact, freedom of speech, the founding fathers, people like John Stuart Mill and Thomas Paine, how did they propose the idea of the freedom of speech? They, they stated in their writings that freedom of, freedom of speech, the purpose is to spread justice, progress, and individual freedom. And this cannot be done outside the moral norms of a society. Now, this movie breaks all moral conventions um, by any standard. You go to any society, you live in any society, people will never insult someone who is uh, held dear by billions of people. Okay? Prophet Muhammad has a very special place in the hearts of billions of Muslims. In fact, Muslims believe that one has to love the Prophet more than his or her parents. The Prophet himself stated in a, in a report, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين You will not believe until I become more beloved to you than your parents, than your children, and all of mankind put, put together. And this is exactly what the Muslims believe. Muslims uh, believe that the Prophet Wasallam has to be to them by, uh, than their parents and the children and all of mankind put together. So all these people are trying to do is to cause a rift between the West and the East and I think they won't be successful because there are still very sensible people alive in the West and in the East who will condemn and who have rightly condemned this, uh, the production of this film such as the Pope himself came out and he condemned uh, the Vatican. Uh, I don't know about the Pope whether he personally condemned the film but the Vatican has condemned um, the, the making of this film. So this film doesn't serve any purpose, any civilized purpose. What is the purpose of this film? Is this uh, 
a research? Is it is 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 the film trying to promote intellectual debate? Is it rational? Is it logical? None of these qualities are to be attributed to this film. Anyone who watches the film objectively, you will come to realize that this is simply hate mongering, and people are just trying to cause rift and division and hatred among the masses in the world in general. Well, uh, l let's see what Muslims should do here, Adnan Rashid. And uh, uh, you know, when we're looking at a a double impact you had in uh, uh, the UK, this uh, controversial documentary, Islam the Untold Story, which was aired in Britain, that created a stir. Uh, we know it's questioning the origin of Islam and its holy book, the Holy Quran. I mean, demonizing Islam and Muslims, uh, just uh, uh, instances keep continuing, but more in its intensity. Uh, what should the Muslim world do uh, to show that uh, Islam and Muslims should not be painted in a picture that has violence in it because obviously that's how this is being again portrayed uh, whether it's through the eyes of uh, American officials or across the tubes. First of all uh, I would like to clarify that the Muslim world is not against a valid intellectual inquiry or a valid rational study of any religion or any personality or uh, a historical personality. We don't uh, mind or we don't um, have any problem with anyone studying the life of the Prophet in an intellectual manner, in a respectful manner. And if someone wants to criticize the Prophet, it has to be done with due respect, uh, making sure that the Muslim sentiments are not um, put in jeopardy or Muslims are not harmed or their feelings are not um, uh, in any way maligned. My, my, my point here is the Muslim uh, message to the Muslim world is that Muslims have to now unite. They have to have a political uh, united um, response to these kind of attacks on Islam. For example, the documentary was lame. I myself was one of the authors of a report uh, which was written in response to the documentary. And in this documentary, we pointed out many uh, uh, you know, problems. For example, historically, the documentary was anachronistic because the, the, the author or the presenter of the documentary and the book uh, clearly stated that we do not find any evidence for Prophet Muhammad or Islam in the early days of the 7th century, which is uh, historically uh, inaccurate because we gave evidence, we produced evidence, and his response was again not satisfactory. Now, what is, what is the purpose behind producing these kind of documentaries and these kind of films? This is what my concern is. Why are these people doing these, uh, th these kind of actions? What they want to do, in my humble opinion, is to cause a rift, a clash of civilization, which obviously wasn't realized by writing those books. So when Samuel Huntington wrote his book, The Clash of Civilization, uh, civilization it was criticized, it was condemned, it was rejected. Now, the point here is that these people are trying to now produce films and insult Muslims so the Muslims are provoked to, to do things. Uh, and these people can point fingers at Muslims and say, look how Muslims are reacting. This is not a humane way of behaving. Well, fair enough. Um, but my point is, why produce things like this? Why provoke someone to go to such an extent where people lose their minds? My uh, view is that the Muslims must unite. Muslims must uh, remain contained. Muslims shouldn't uh, protest in manners and ways uh, which is not befitting of Muslims. In fact, it is our right to protest. It is our right to come and condemn and unanimously uh, have a statement of condemnation sent to the US and to the Israelis. But at the same time, ensuring that no innocent lives are lost, no buildings are burnt or destroyed. This has to be ensured. And I am very sure that there are people out there in the Muslim, among the Muslim masses, who will try to, prov who will try to provoke uh, this kind of reaction. We don't want this kind of reaction. We want a contained, uh, a politically organized reaction. And the Muslims must come together politically in the world, in the Middle East and in the Far East, wherever the Muslims are in North Africa. We must have a united political statement sent to the U.S. and to the Israelis that we will never accept any such insults to our prophet or to our religion. We welcome any intellectual debate. We welcome any intellectual and rational study of our religion and our prophet. And we the Muslims are the first people to do that. We are the people who scrutinized our sources before anyone did. And we are the, we are the people who put everything in front of the, the world to study. So come and study, share your values with us, share, share, your view, share your views with us. We will welcome them, but we will not tolerate any insults to, towards our prophet and towards our religion. 
and we do not believe in insulting anyone's religion and anyone's prophets or anyone, any personalities held dear uh, by billions of people or millions of people in the world. So my message to the Muslim world is to unite politically and send, uh, send a united politically united response to the U.S. and to the State of Israel that this kind of rhetoric will not be tolerated and such people should be punished, not hailed as hero, as uh, appears to be the case. Okay, we appreciate that. Thank you, Adnan Rashid, historian and political commentator. Thank you for your, uh, sharing your thoughts here. And, of course, Sab Shathar, author and Middle East affairs expert from Belfast.